1917, the U.S. found, preceding the maturing of radar, radio, and at-sea scouting aircraft, it needed a 7,000-ton European-style cruiser. That is to say, they needed a ship that could scout ahead of, of the battleships, find the enemy, report back its location, then lead destroyer squadrons in the resulting battle. A ship that was also able to operate independently over the wide areas of the world's oceans, protecting the commerce lanes, and if needed, raiding them. The result was the ten ships of the Omaha class. Predating the Washington Treaty, the first two were started in December 1918, with the rest being started throughout 1920. While originally termed scout cruisers, they were redesignated light cruisers in July 1920 while still under construction. They would commission between February 1923 and February 1925. Their role as a scout and destroyer leader dictated a high speed. To that end, they had 12 boilers arranged in the unit principle, which meant the boilers would be divided into four separate rooms with a forward pair of rooms separated from the aft pair by an engine room. In theory, this would make it harder for a single hit to knock out all the boilers and rob the ship of power. A result of this subdivision was that the Omahas would have four stacks which made them at least passingly resemble the contemporary flush deck type destroyers they were meant to lead. With such a powerful engine, they were able to deliver 90,000 horsepower to four shafts driving the ship up to 35 knots. To help reach this speed, and in light of their envisioned role as a scout and destroyer leader, they virtually sacrificed all armor protection. A mere three inch belt was topped by a one and a half inch of deck armor. The main gun layout was unusual, even for the time. Twelve six inch 53 caliber guns were carried. Two in a twin turret on the bow, two in a twin turret on the stern. The rest were mounted in single casemates with two stacked at each of the four corners of the superstructure. This may seem like a terribly inefficient layout, and it was, <laughs> but you have to remember the purpose of these ships was to either be running away from larger ships as a tattletale or toward them as a destroyer squadron leader. This meant they would theoretically at least usually be firing straight over the bow or stern rather than the traditional broadsides. Secondary armament consisted of four single 3-inch 50 caliber anti-aircraft guns mounted amidship. For aircraft, they were fitted with two catapults, but no hangars, for two float planes. For their role as a destroyer leader, they carried two triple 21-inch torpedo tubes and had the ability to lay over 200 mines. As the years went on, the inevitable advance in technology brought shifting tactics and the inevitable growth in weight, most of it topside. To help control weight margins and reduce clutter, in the 20s, CL6 and 8 through 12 had the lower aft case-mated 6-inch guns removed. Although Marblehead had had one of them replaced on the aft center line, it would later be removed. By the end of World War II, most had lost their torpedo tubes, all had lost their mine capability, and Cincinnati, Raleigh, and Detroit had eight three-inch guns and Memphis seven. All served in secondary roles due to their age. High points include Raleigh and Detroit were at Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked. Raleigh was nearly sunk after being torpedoed. Richmond took part in the Battle of Komondorsky Island in March 1943. Marblehead was part of the U.S.'s Asiatic fleet at the start of World War II. She quickly joined the American, British, Dutch, and Australian defenders, the so-called ABDA force. On January 24, 1942, she covered the destroyer force that took part in the Battle of Balakpapan. In early February 1942, at the Battle of Makassar Strait, she was bombed twice and near missed once. The damage was bad, and she was forced to head for New York via South Africa. Finally, and barely making it three months later on May 4th, 
repaired by October of that year, she spent the rest of the war in the Atlantic. Memphis was basically relegated to an experimental role by World War II. On April 20, 1944, Milwaukee was loaned to the Soviet Union, pending the transfer of surrendered Italian ships. She was returned an utter mess in March 1949. Small and obsolete, the rest were decommissioned quickly after the end of the war.